This week we're going to discuss the offense and minicamp. Yeah. yeah, the funny thing is Tebow controversies up north now. Go figure. There's a wait. No, the circus in New England and with the Giants too, with Hakeem Nicks oh and with the Cruz. I don't want to talk about it. Hey, hey circus, <laughs> circus. Now, that's usually your forte, so uh, <laughs> it's new territory to me. Yeah, enjoy it. All right, well, let's talk about offense. Uh, minicamp broke today, right? Yep. Um, how's the offense progressing now? I know in minicamp all they're doing is installing uh, schemes. Mm-hmm. But can you judge anything at all from the minicamp? I mean, the funny thing is everybody's so excited about football. Any kind of news on the field gets overanalyzed and exaggerated and everything else. I mean, it's the, they're not even in pads. Not, there's no contact. So, I mean, if Sanchez struggles, like, oh, my God, he's terrible. Or if Geno Smith looks good, he's not even getting hit. I mean, they're not even – so, I mean, it's good. It's the install. They're, they're doing some things. You're, you're starting to see some flashes out of you know, players. But I mean, dude, it's mini camp. Talk yeah, to me but, in but training camp. The funny camp. thing is, remember a couple weeks ago, what is it, the New York Times starts going crazy because Sanchez threw interceptions in practice. Yeah, he threw. We talking about practice? <laughs> pra- yeah, Allen Iverson. What? No, uh, it's. I mean, everybody's excited. I mean, football fans are diehards. They any bit of information they overanalyze, especially Jet fans, because we're just critical to begin with. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's the offense. They're doing their thing. I mean, and obviously the defense. This time of year is always ahead of the offense. That's just the way it is, especially when you're installing a new, off, you know, morning wigs offense. So I mean, it's it's going to be growing pains, man. This is it's just the nature of the beast. All right, let's talk about quarterbacks. Um, the biggest story of the off season, obviously, is Sanchez versus Smith. Yeah, huge, huge story. Huge story. Um, what are your initial thoughts? What do you want to know, man? Well, I mean, I mean, first I mean, of all, can uh, can Geno Smith win the job in in the I mean, in minicamp. If we're uh, if we're gonna be completely honest with the Jets, want Geno Smith to win the job? They, they do. I mean, the negative aura around Sanchez between the fans, the team, the press. I mean, he's he's got an uphill battle just in the outside influences. I mean, the first incomplete pass he throws, the first interception, everybody from you know everybody's gonna be booing him. I want to bench everything else. With that being said, Geno Smith's not ready right now. Based on everything we've seen, I mean, David Lee, the quarterback coach, came out today. said he's not ready yet. He's getting used to the West Coast offense with a lot of, you know, a lot of different variances, the NFL style, speed of the game, coming out from under center, under center. said the shotgun. That's a big one. It's a big change. His footwork has improved, but he, I mean, this is still, I mean, he's not getting hit. He doesn't have guys coming down his throat, putting a helmet in his chest. So, can can Geno Smith win the job? They want him to. But there's a long way to go for that. Well, you know, the unfair thing is people are comparing him to RG3, and he's not RG3. No. I mean, they're different quarterbacks. Geno Smith is a legit p- pocket passer where RG3 is a runner. Geno Smith can run, yep. but, I mean, his deep ball is beautiful. He's got talent. He's got a, he's got a very good arm. He's, he's got ability. But you know what it is? Jet fans were so desperate for a franchise quarterback. I mean, if, if it was if they drafted you know Ryan Nassib or whoever it was, that guy, everybody's like, oh, my God, he, he's the guy. You know, so now it's Geno Smith. So every little thing, every little positive thing he does is like, he's the guy, franchise. He's right. start on week one. Because we're so hungry to get Sanchez out and to have, they just want a franchise quarterback. All right, so, so when is it important in your mind to name a quarterback as a starter just so the team has cohesion going into week one? You, you can't, you know, it, a couple weeks ago there was a story with the Jets, they may name a starting quarterback before training camp. And I ripped them to shreds. I'm like, you've got to be out of your mind. You, if you want a true quarterback competition, it's got to be a couple weeks in the training camp where it's every day, the grind, the you know, full install, defense coming after you, hits. The all It's got to be a couple weeks, and the best man wins. Not be, It can't be Sanchez the incumbent, okay, you're the starter, or you're the new guy, Gino, we hate Sanchez. The best man in open competition wins, but it's going to be after a couple weeks of training camp. could be a couple games. It could be like week three of training camp, and you figure it out. But it can't be, it's no time before then. It'd be stupid to do that. Uh, would you bring in a veteran, or is there a veteran even out there worth bringing in? Oh, I, I've been all over this one. Uh, David Garrard being retiring was, yeah, a, was a bummer for me because I had high hopes for him. Um, I've talked about bringing in Byron Leftwich, Tyler Thigpen. I didn't bring in Tavares Jackson. For me, it's about competition. Well, Jackson's off. He's, uh, I believe he signed with the Seahawks. But, but I'm saying at this point, I mean, you, you bring in, you want competition. John Idzik preaches competition. For me, it's not McElroy and Matt Sims. Bring in a veteran guy. God forbid Mark Sanchez gets hurt. Do you want to throw Geno Smith to the Wolves? Or are you going to hand the team over to Greg McElroy? Bring in somebody else. Bring in a Tyler Thigpen. Or bring in something, a Byron Leftwich. Bring in that kind of guy that mm-hmm. he's played before. He's seen these defenses before. So you're not mailing in your season. Or throwing Geno Smith to the Wolves where he's just going to get his tail kicked. 
Well, you know, closing on quarterbacks, we'll move into running backs, but I saw an interview with Jack, uh, Mark Sanchez today, and it's the most upbeat and positive I've seen him in like two years. He um, actually said his arm felt good, it felt alive, and he felt like he was seeing the defense is pretty good. You know what? I, so it was a little positive. You know, I I'll, I will say this, and you know I've defended Mark Sanchez for a Absolutely. while. Absolutely. And well, I mean, he's a likable dude. It's not you, like we hate the kid. No, you can make an argument this year. This is the best coaching step offensively he's had to deal with between David Lee and Marty Morningway in terms of offensive philosophy, coaching, quarterback coaching, working on footwork and accountability. You can make an argument that that wasn't happening under Sperano or Schottenheimer. If you're not, Morningway practices, he's like, if you play well, you play. If you practice well, you play. If you don't, you don't play. If you make the throws, it's all about accountability and you earn your reps. And I don't think that was the case in the past. So I think he's getting quality coaching now. I think he's he's, he's improving with his footwork. He's, he has a chance to get better. My concern is all the the past coming back to bite him. Well, yeah, you know, and again, closing on quarterback, we'll move to running backs. But uh, I was watching Hard Knocks, the because they, they <laughs> yeah. were playing it on NFL Probably Network. The best and, one um, it was. You know, it, they were enamored with that kid. Yeah. They were like they they would have uh like celebrity outings and they were like kind of enamored that everybody wanted to meet Sanchez. Yep. You know he was like a celebrity coming yep. in, Mr. USC. So, and you know that's gone with. with that. That's done. Now with. he's like public enemy number one. Everybody but, blames everything on Sanchez. But you know what? It might be interesting. He's a fourth year. Uh, it was fourth year, correct? Yep. Fifth, I mean, sometimes fifth, it just yeah. clicks. You hope. You hope. You hope. All right. Well, let's, let's talk about running backs. What do you think about the new running backs? Man, they're loaded. They're, they are loaded. You're excited? And the difference between this year and last year is speed and explosiveness. I mean, Mike Goodson flies. I mean... Nice pickup. Uh, Chris Ivory is just a bull. I mean, but they have... There's just... There's a whole different dynamic. Sean Green was a, was a plotter. It was like, you know, three steps and fall down. These guys, the explosive nature, and there's a legitimate competition where there's four running backs that can all... With Powell, McKnight... I mean, well, Chris Ivory, I mean... Is a I have ball. everything that I've heard in the preseason, like you know, sleeper picks for uh, fantasy. Chris Ivory averaged a ton a, of, ca- yeah. I mean, ton of yards per carry. Um, he might be a nice sleeper. Comes down to health, man. Stay healthy. Right. But I mean, but they have a dynamic, dynamic running back. What do you think? Group. What are they? Four deep. I think so. Yeah. Do you, you think people four? I would. You know, see, the, 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 for most people, the odd man out is Joe McKnight, and I hate that idea. No way. Joe, Joe, he gets hurt a lot. He had okay. some fumbling issues. But he's also a great returner. Absolutely. But he's also in, in Morning Wake's system. And I'm gonna keep preaching this. He's gonna he's gonna use everybody's talent. He's gonna maximize talent. Catch, catch the ball out of backfield. Absolutely. Get, get that him West an open Coast offense. So that five it's yard a, uh, little hitch to bubble screen. Get him an open space. You get McKnight in open space. Anything can happen. All these guys are assets to the team, and I don't take away from their strength. So I keep all four. All right. Strength. Let's oh. talk about a little weakness. Tight end. Oh, I think I say, <laughs> I think I say receiver. Kellen Winslow. <laughs> Was brought in. That's how uh, shallow the tight end position is right now. Um, what are your thoughts on the position as a whole and, and the, the, the oh, group you have? Man, there? if you if you read anything I write, man, this this position drives me insane. Jeff Cumberland as your starting tight end is a huge That's concern, rough. and a bigger concern is the guys behind them have no proven NFL experience. Hayden Smith and Conrad Rulin. <laughs> Seriously? Honestly, I've never even heard of No, games. I mean, they... I they, know they, college they I mean, to. with all respect, Hayden Smith showed some flashes. He made some big catches in practice, and Conrad Rulin's getting open, and these are all great stories. Well, at least you want hungry. But, dude, they're great minicamp stories. When the pads start popping, I want NFL guys in there. And according to everybody that I've read the last two days, Kellen Winslow was the best tight end on the field. Are you serious? Yes. So you think he'll make the squad? They're going to offer him a contract. Really? Because, yeah, because the one, we do Jet Nation Radio, and we yeah. had two guys there watching him. And one guy, Ron Pickett, was like, dude, he's the best player in the field in terms of receiving the ball and making plays. He was the best guy out there. Kellen I Winslow. remember watching him in early in his career, and he would fan those hands out, yep. and it was like this wide. See, it's not about talent with him. It's about his knees, staying right. healthy. But right now, the Jets are desperate. Keep him off a motorbike, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something. But you know what I mean? Like, but like, I've been saying this for weeks. Him, Chris Cooley, you got to bring somebody in. That's why I want a Tyler Eifert, but that's a whole other mm-hmm. story. But... I yeah, mean, okay. if you can, if you can get Winslow and you can get him signed at a reasonable contract, uh, you have to do it. Yeah, you got in- incentive laden. You never know. They what need maybe dude, West up. Coast offense with our receiving group. You need a tight end to catch, catch the ball. Lightning in a bottle, maybe. Yep. All right. Well, you you said you feel the weakest group is wide receivers. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, let's talk about them. Terrible. Well, the the, the one thing that I did here is it, it seems middle Mister uh, drops balls is uh, continuing. <laughs> Hey, he leaves, he's consistent. <laughs> if nothing else, it's consistent. It, well, Santonio Holmes is going to be ready to be able to, by week one. Who knows? I mean, now they say he may he may be ready for training camp. He may not be. I mean, it depends on who you believe. 
But I think the problem we have right now is everybody assumes when Santonio Holmes comes back, he's the old Santonio Holmes week one. And you can't assume that. No. I mean, he's just he's just learning how to run again, getting back into his routes. He's doing all so that's your number one receiver. So now he's not going to be full strength. Say if he even does come back on time to probably what week three, week four. So if he's not your no, number, he's not an ex, uh, like a possession receiver. He no. was the quick ditch down the field receiver. So now if you take him away, say he's not right. ready week four. Look at what's behind him. I mean, is Jeremy Curley a number one receiver? I mean, he's a nice number three. Is Stephen Hill? Maybe, maybe one day a number two. Here's one for you. Is Clyde Gates a number one receiver? <laughs> Probably not. So that's my concern. It's like you, you, you like everybody's. They assume San Antonio Holmes is gonna come back 100. percent You can't assume that. Stephen Hill still can't well, catch. Touch on Stephen Hill real quick. I, I can't take it anymore. Can he catch the friggin' ball already, dude? This is you've had it. Okay, rookie jitters, the speed of the NFL, all that. I get that. You've had an entire off season to clean up your game, and he's still dropping passes. Well, um. For the fans' sake, is there somebody on that roster that you you know you have a bit of inside info now, you're a bit more connected uh, than we were last year. Is there any um, buzz as to somebody maybe emerging out of that wide receiver? Well, group? there's two guys they said they mentioned Zach Rogers and okay. they mentioned uh, Marcus Davis, which another guy Ron Pickett mentioned too. One of the most fun things going into camp is watching these stories. But dude, you know what though? I don't want to hear stories. I want proven guys. Why not bring in a Braylon Edwards? Why not bring in Brandon Lloyd? Why not bring in somebody else? Why do we gotta put hope on these young guys and hope we hit the, the jackpot with them? If your best receiver is not gonna be able to play and you're gonna rely on Jeremy Curley, Stephen Hill, and Clyde Gates to be your guys. Or Jordan White? Are you serious? It's a passing league. And then, and then the, the make matters worse, your tight end is not that good if you start with Jeff Cumberland. So if you want to have a passing game, a dynamic passing game, and you have no like reliable targets, how are you exactly going to do that? I mean, it's a recipe for failure right now. And I mean, I don't care what anybody tells me. The quarterback can make receivers better. If your receivers can't get separation, you're going to have problems. All right, well... Let's let's end uh, the offense on a high note. Offensive line. <laughs> oh, oh, they they brought no. in nice depth. They, they did. brought in nice They're depth. They're loaded, man. Absolutely. They, Do you think the offensive line can be, move into the strength of the team again? Absolutely. I mean, they have some depth. I mean, Willie Colon, Peterman, the rookie Brian Winters. I mean, the one thing that John Idzik was, was he said, strengthen the lines. And an offensive line, the biggest complaint in the past was depth. They got a ton of depth now. And there's there's some competition. And you can see guys like Vlad Dukas and, and Schlatteroff be out of here because the competition is that good in terms of the draft class and the guys they brought well, that's in. That's good to hear. I mean, it's a domino effect. A strong offensive line equals good running game. True. Good running game equals that play action. Maybe you can get a receiver open. And the thing is, a morning way keeps preaching you maximize what you have. And right now the Jets have a strong offensive line and a very good group of running backs. So you can see bubble screens. You can see screen pass. You can see all kinds of things using that. So that's a, it's definitely a positive. It's an improvement since last year. Well, let's segue into more morning way. Uh, what are your thoughts? The, the, biggest, the biggest surprise of Morningwig is that he's more... Everybody preaches West Coast offense, which is that short passing game. Right. He incorporates a lot of down-the-field passes that I, I didn't really expect that aspect of it. But he preaches accountability. You earn your reps. And he, he's about taking advantage of mismatches. Like, if you have a mismatch, take advantage of it. If you have a very explosive running back and a linebacker can't cover him or a safety can't cover him, give them ball. When in the past, the Jets were like, run the ball up the middle. We don't care. Right. Try to stop us. And they'd stop him, run the ball up the middle, try to stop us. We're stopping you. We're morning ways like, you know what? We're going to keep doing it until you stop it. And when you stop it, we're going to spurt it out even more. And it's like, it's about confusion and mismatches. Little excited? I, liked, I like his approach, but I'm concerned that we don't have the playmakers to take advantage of his approach. Gotcha. Has anything surprised you about the offense? No. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to hear about the running backs. I mean, I'm just, I'm still concerned about the receiving, the passing aspect of it. Um, it's it's got to be a concern, man. I mean, it's what what are you gonna do? I mean, you you need you need playmakers on offense. And they've not addressed it as of yet. All right. So in closing, your overview on the offense going into camp. A lot of question marks. I mean, if you can get Kellen Winslow signed, be great. I bring in a Brandon Lloyd or a Braylon Edwards. I bring in receiving help. Um, and then you got to hope that Geno Smith steps up or Mark Sanchez matures and, and takes the bull by the horns. But it's it's not it, it could be a tough one. I mean, you gotta keep in mind is there's gonna be a learning curve. You gotta still learn this offense, which is somewhat new, and then implement it. And that's it could be tough, man. All right, well let's we'll see what happens. It's not gonna be easy. All right. Thank you for watching our latest video. Please check us out at thejetsetter.com. You can follow me on Twitter T Roush21, Facebook Tyson Roush. Also, we do Jet Nation Radio Tuesday nights at eight o'clock. Check it out. We got a, we got a pretty good show going on there. 
Um, and that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the videos. We, we hope to do more in the future with training camp around the corner. So that's it. Talk to you guys next time.